to study art or photography? <coughs> I, 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 I was, the, no, I, uh, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, <clears throat> I was 13 when the war started, and that put a bit of spanner in the works, and uh, I was going, I would, I, was, uh, I would like to have been a landscape painter, really. So I did dabble in that, but then I went to a technical school for design and things like that, and I did, five years of that and the war finished and it was in Holland, nothing you could do, the war finished, the whole country was in shambles and all that. So the only thing that was left over was the army, so I joined the army after the war, spent four years in the army and then came to Australia and I've not, never done a day's work in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I came here at 24 and uh, they say, uh, what do you want to do? And I said, to paint landscapes or I, I know a bit about this and that. They said, I'm painting. Okay, so so I got a job as a house painter, but I got a sack. <laughs> so I got a sack after, uh, after a week. And they said, you know that. And then, then the second one was the same thing. I didn't hang it. But the third one, I've been known enough to just keep swinging the brush and sort of, and he put me on the roof or in a hotel here in Perth. And I didn't see him for a week, and uh, I painted the whole roof, and that was the beginning. And then, sort of a year later, I started to do a bit of work for myself, and um, and went to more. And I only I did only work in the bush, so I got jobs with um, BP, British Petroleum, to and I went to Esperance, when Eric Link uh, Link Matter started the farming. Orleans farm and all those farms. So I would say most of the time I spent in the bush, and that's when I got a real appreciation for what Australia was all about, you know, the coastline as well as the interiors, and as I said, flew with uh, McRobert Similar Airlines to Derby, which took 12 hours, and uh, we arrived there and we painted all the quarters for the, the uh, aerostasis and the pilots. That was the main base, Derby was the main base for the Kimberleys in those days. Uh, Kanonara hadn't, hadn't started yet, you were driven down and started, nothing. So I saw a lot of the early progress of the state, which all helped me, and also the Department of Industrial Development wanted photographs. When I came back from Holland, from Europe, I said, I'm going to be a professional photographer. So I, uh, I presented myself to various, I didn't want a studio, that was the whole important thing was for me to keep my freedom. I can't afford to have a studio because they bring things to you, refrigerators and things like that. And I didn't want that. I wanted to have the freedom to be a freelance photographer. So I, um, that's what I did. So I did the Department of Industrial Development, the Department of Trade, I went to Sydney, Walkabout Magazine, Brian McArdle. Uh, all these, these were fantastic beginnings. They said, oh, we know nothing about Western Australia. Why don't you stay there? I, I'd gone to the Eastern States in 19... Um, 59, thereabouts, with a portfolio of work, and I said, okay, I'm finished with West Australia, go to Sydney, and I'm going to be a photographer. But when I went to Sydney, and I met those companies, and the, all the publicity houses, and the, all the various companies that had and started to develop an interest in West Australia, they said, I would like you to go back because we know nothing about Western Australia or we have nobody in Western Australia. So I immediately was fully employed in photography. It was a little amazing. So it, it, it was an amazing time in those days when all these things were possible. And the tyranny of distance, the, 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 the photographers in Eastern States didn't come here to photograph. They would assign, like me and a few others, to do things here. Now, of course, with all the jet age, you know, photographers are all over the place. But it, it was an, um, a, a very good and interesting uh, period uh, that is very different now, of course. Do you have a private photograph here that you uh, <laughs> uh, There's uh, There's too many. <laughs> but uh, there are. I, I, I do like. I do like the end clearings around the corner because it's, I don't know what, what that's supposed to be, it's in the desert. It's, I found these ends, uh, 
they clear an area of about three meters, four meters. They take it all underground. There's no evidence of it above ground. And a couple of little holes where they've taken it. And then they are extremely territorial because they've spaced themselves one circuit, circle from another almost at equal distance throughout that country. And I'm amazed at that. I don't know why. I really haven't had much explanation on it, why it is actually so precise. Um, um, obviously, they're all living in the ground, but, uh, but those sort of things are always surprising, and I'm very pleased with that sort of thing.